All right, 12 News storm trackers want to give you an early warning. A winter storm could bring freezing rain and ice to, to southeast Texas early next week. Now, the temperatures could be some of the coldest that we've seen in years. That means it's time to start preparing around your house. Jordan James has advice from experts in just a couple of minutes. But first, we want to turn to our weather expert, Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn, for the latest on this possible ice storm. Well, first off, we got to get the Arctic air in, and uh, this is the temperature uh, Tuesday morning ahead of that ice storm. We are certainly going to have Arctic air across the Lone Star State, and uh, likely this could be as much as, uh, you know, 25 degrees below normal. Uh, GFS continues to update, and we continue to see the possibility of an ice storm very similar to what we saw in 1997. This is not a definite situation, but uh, certainly looking like the potential that we could see ice accumulate across southeast Texas. Again, this is GFS Euro to a lesser extent showing uh, the potential for an icy scenario across our area. So what is the difference between freezing rain and sleet? This is going to be coming up uh, by, uh, say, Sunday night right on through Monday. Well, with rain, everything starts in the cloud layer is snow that falls and then melts all the way to the ground. With freezing rain, it starts to snow, the flakes melt, become raindrops, and then close to the ground, they refreeze as ice over everything. With sleet, the uh, flakes f fall into a layer of warm air, melt to uh, raindrops, and then refreeze into little BBs or pellets, and then snow, of course, you've got freezing temperatures all the way to the ground. That's the difference between sleet and freezing rain, which I think we're going to see. And by, say, Tuesday morning, could see teens and 20s across the area. You'll need to take care of all four Ps. Well, we know the preparations are already beginning around Southeast Texas tonight. Experts say this really is the best time to take precautions before it gets too cold. So what are some of the things you could be doing? We sent 12 News reporter Jordan James to get some answers and he joins us live tonight. Yeah, Dejanique, if there's one thing we know about Texas is that the weather can change fast. In light of the weather is expected to come this way, experts say now is the time to take preparations. What looks like a picture perfect day in Beaumont soon could be changing. If this materializes, this could be a significant, a potentially significant, serious uh, event. With the threat of freezing temperatures and rain in the forecast for later this week, items are flying off the shelves at MMD Supply. We are always busier when uh, kind of these natural phenomenon occur. Store manager Frank Gutierrez says part of taking care of yourself is protecting your property. Among the most important things are your pipes. Your biggest issue is going to be your pipes bursting. If your pipes bursting, you're going to lose water in your house. Uh, you know that is going to affect your whole family. Pipes can burst when temperatures fall below 32 degrees. So the solution to that is making sure that they are wrapped. It seems like when it does happen, our phone will ring off the hook the next day. Stony Pettit, owner of Anderson Homes, a Southeast Texas contractor, says pipes are generally more vulnerable in older homes. An older home that's up on a, a pier and bean foundation you know, they have all those those pipes underneath the house that they really got to worry about. A newer house that's, that's on a slab, uh, you have that one less wall that you got to worry about. So we have your pipe wrap insulation in your two most popular sizes. Back at MMD Supply, Gutierrez says it's also important not to forget about your pets and your plants. Jordan is free. Your pets obviously are very important to all of us. You want to make sure those are heated. If it gets down and too cold, your plants, you know, anything that gets to freezing, they can die off and we want to protect those as well. For more on how to prepare for this winter freeze, head over to our website, 12thnewsnow.com. Reporting here live in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12th News. Tonight, 12 News Investigates is checking into COVID-19 testing sites that are popping up around the Golden Triangle. You've probably seen the signs advertising the free testing, so we wanted to know who is monitoring these sites. And we found out it's not necessarily the state of Texas. 12 News reporter Amelia White is live with a story all new at 10. Jordan and Dage, many folks may have spotted signs in the area about free COVID-19 testing. Well, it's true, it is free, but you won't be going to your local doctor or hospital to get tested. You don't have to look far to find a pop-up COVID-19 testing site in Beaumont. It's they're offering something to you absolutely free. I mean, it's it's in no way of any way to harm you by them testing you for it and it's costing you nothing. 
This free COVID-19 testing site is convenient for Mary Rose Dago and her two girls. I don't think people realize how many people actually don't have insurance or don't see a, um, a family physician on a regular. Nurse practitioner Chad LaPray runs this testing site off Lucas Drive. We also take people who don't have insurance um, and we build the government uh, through the CARES Act so it's no cost to them. You may have driven past yard signs like this one that lead the way. I'm, a, I'm local and so I, I wanted to bring it here and so we wanted to offer the drive through service which not a lot of people do. 12 News investigates wanted to know who was regulating these remote testing sites. 12 News called the clinic Wednesday, but a spokesperson told us no one would be able to speak with us until Thursday. LaFrey says the credentialing process isn't easy and it can take months. Uh, we're, we are credentialed through a, a clinic called the Best Clinic, um, which is in Houston. But you have to get credentialed, and the credentialing takes a long time. And so what we wanted to do was at the beginning of this, we wanted to get going as quick as possible. So we credentialed through the Best Clinic. But what about others? We reached out to the state. A spokesperson from the Department of State of Health Services told 12 News they do not regulate testing sites or labs where testing is conducted. So if you pull up on a site, your best bet may be to ask questions about their credentials. And we want to get tested here if they want to get tested here. And we want to get tested anywhere, elsewhere if they, if they feel more comfortable with that. But we want people to have choices and we want people to have access. And for Mary and her two girls, well, they appreciate the easy opportunity. Oh, I thank them. I think this is a great help to the community. Now, as you come across more testing sites, be sure to do your research and make sure that site is credentialed. Live in Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. Quick note before we move on here, Amelia uh, let us know that she did reach out to the, the clinic in Houston that supposedly credentialed the Beaumont location. They expect to get back to us tomorrow, so we will follow up. Well, tonight we have a better idea how the mass vaccine hubs are operating in Southeast Texas. The hubs have administered nearly 3,500 doses of COVID vaccine. These are numbers from the end of the business day yesterday, and you can see that on its first day, the city of Port Arthur went through 535 of its 2,500 doses. The city exceeded its daily goal. And some new info tonight in the state's fight to get more shots into more arms. NRG Stadium in Houston will become a new mega vaccine vaccine site. It's part of a partnership between the state and the White House to build three community vaccination centers in Houston, Arlington and Dallas. They'll be run by FEMA. Together, the sites will be capable of giving more than 10,000 shots a day. According to a press release from the White House, they expect the sites to be up and running beginning the week of February 22nd. Some new info now. The CDC says that double masking offers more protection against COVID-19, blocking more than 90% of the particles that spread the virus. The new research comes after months of criticism that the CDC was being slow to issue official mask guidelines. Now, when it comes to double masking, they say wear a surgical mask for the first layer and then put a cloth mask on top. By the numbers, we're seeing a pretty big dip in COVID-19 hospitalizations across Jefferson County on Wednesday evening. So here are the stats. 22 fewer patients are being treated for the virus than the same time 24 hours ago. Welcome news for our region. But as you can see here, the ICU beds are still full, zero beds available. 16% of the patients in general beds are fighting the coronavirus, while about 42% of the ICU patients are fighting the same battle. Now, as for the case count, Southeast Texas added 221 positive patients to its tally. This is without data from the Port Arthur Health Department, so this number could increase. 14 of those cases are out of Jefferson County, but I want you to take a look at these outliers. 169 out of Chambers, another 20 two coming from Liberty County logged. Overall, our regional hospitalization rate 19%. Going to try and get compliance, but this is now effectively a riot. 1349 hours declaring it a riot. House members sharing chilling new video evidence of the attack on the Capitol during day two of Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. Now, Democrats hope that that video will be enough to sway Republican senators to join them in convicting the former president. As ABC's Faith of Ube reports, Democrats say Trump incited the deadly insurrection. Never before seen video playing in the Senate chamber on day two of former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. 
And so they came, draped in Trump's flag, and used our flag, the American flag, to batter and to bludgeon. The chilling and terrifying footage showing lawmakers just feet away from Capitol rioters on January 6th. You were just 58 steps away from where the mob was amassing. That mob intent on finding the House Speaker. Nancy! Where are you, Nancy? And Vice President Mike Pence. Hey, Mike Pence! Hey, Mike Pence! Capitol Police officers seen running to the rescue, rushing lawmakers to safety. In another scene, the insurrectionists banging on an office door. On the other side, congressional staffers huddled in fear, whispering for help. They're pounding the doors trying to find her. The so impeachment managers methodically election. laying out their case in chronological that order, arguing that Trump's betrayal of his oath of office Violence began so long before the continue. deadly insurrection. He fanned the flame of violence, and it worked. And when the violence began, the House impeachment manager is saying Trump did not stop it. Instead, he served as the inciter in chief. The impeachment managers appealing directly to the senators. Witnesses of the attack now seated as jurors. Some Republican senators calling the Democrats' presentation compelling. Just a very powerful video. I'm angry, I'm disturbed, I'm sad. Trump's defense team ready to make their case once Democrats wrap up their opening arguments tomorrow. We can't possibly be suggesting that we punish people for political speech in this country. Faith Abube, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Now each side is going to have 16 hours for their opening arguments. Democrats plan to wrap up tomorrow. No word on whether the former president's defense team will wait until Friday to take the floor.